breaker, taking credit as an educator. I've been known to spit the flows and make it shaky, shaky thing. Popping, knocking, stopping, let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop, it's like a stain. We make the whole room drop and everybody sang. We want the funk. We gotta have that funk. Oh, we kick it old school, we think we're so cool. We take it back to the past, we gonna act a fool. Laugh. Hello, 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 and welcome to Sports Buzz, the fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here in studio taping the show on a Thursday afternoon, not live this evening, as you watch us from 6.30 to 7 o'clock every Thursday night, re-airing Friday afternoons, 1 to 1.30. But we are here in the Comcast Cable Channel 23 studios. A little snow this morning, yeah. this January 22nd. We did have a little bit of snow, but um, it's uh, getting a little sunny out there, so no. Well, Denver is the only one that was delayed of all the schools. That is surprising that they were the only one delayed. Well, I, you would think if anybody delayed, multiple schools would delay, but no. But again, we do dodge the major, major snow situation for now, although there's some rumblings of possible things this weekend or next week. We will uh, keep our fingers crossed and just keep counting all the Chris, all the winter days gone by with no big snowstorm and no shoveling, which hey, we hey, like. Scott, before we get to it, can you check that Miami ball and see if it's oh, got any Oh, official air? review, timeout. This ball seems a little light, oh, okay. Bob. So, so maybe we Let me see, what, what happens? Oh, he can't come up with the catch. Deflated football on set. The show is under further uh, review. We could, uh, we could have to suspend it entirely. Anyways, all right, uh, we will get back into, the, uh, into that as Bob goes into his technical difficulty mode with his microphone. Working moments before the show starts, working not so fast after the show. Um, ruining our little bit right out, right out of the gate. <laughs> All right, anyways, you hear, you kind of heard maybe, I guess. Maybe you heard, maybe you didn't hear. My right-hand man, Mr. Bob Broad Jr. Yes, yeah, Scott. It was a, we had technical difficulty. Fumble on the set, fumbling you the microphone, right? fumbling the football. Yeah. Bob Show Spotlight on Tuesday nights at 9, Wednesdays at 12. Our director in the studio, Mike Tui, Expose Cinema Friday nights at 1, Wednesdays at 1. And you can see we were testing the air and the ball. The big story of the week, of course, deflate gate. Deflating leads oh, to yeah. blowout is what the headline really should be. If you want to get down and dirty, we had couple, uh, one dramatic finish in the NFC uh, well, football playoff games. I'm wondering if uh, there was any problem with the football up in, uh, in, in Seattle, maybe yeah. in the fourth corner. Maybe they switched out the balls well, there. Well, true, you know. Last five minutes of the game, things went topsy-turvy, haywire. Because it was just like, there was there was all kinds of crazy stuff going on. A lot to get to in that game, and uh, the Patriots-Colts game was really not much to get to as far as the game goes. Well, the first half was, you know, 17-7 at the half. Uh, Patriots were up 14-0 uh, early in this game. Brady throws an interception, allows the Colts to get back into it 14-7, and then they screw up the uh, two-minute drill once again, something they've done all year. They had seven chances at the end zone to make it 21-7 before the break. Instead, they set up for a field goal 17-7, 21-point 20 third quarter, and the route was on as the Patriots once again demolish. They deflate the yes. Colts 45-7 in this Another blowout, three straight blowouts. They blew them out in the regular season this year. They blew them out in the playoffs last year. They're making a habit of, uh, you know, saying luck or not, Colts are not beating us. And they did it in convincing fashion. Last week, we remember Patriots go all pass against the yeah. Ravens, not handing the ball off once in the second half to a running back. This week, 40 rushing attempts to only 35 pass attempts. So. It's game plan specific, as we've seen the Patriots do in the past. They did it again. They know the Colts' rush defense can't stop them. LeGarrette Blunt, he goes for, what, 148 yards and three right. touchdown runs. Brady didn't have to do too much work. 35 pass attempts. Uh, you know, he had 226 yards and three touchdown passes, two of which came to guys you would not think of. Oh, yeah. Offensive linemen. Reported as eligible, Bob. He yes. did report as eligible. Nate Solder comes up with a touchdown. And then the uh, fullback coming out of the backfield, Devlin, 
gets a touchdown as well, and Gronk gets into the action later in the game in the second half with his touchdown reception. Gronk didn't even have to do much damage in this game either. He did have the touchdown, but I think he only had three catches. But it was mostly the rushing yards. Uh, you know, they spread it around. And, uh, and then the defense. Once again, Bob, is it seven games or is it up to eight games now where the defense has allowed eight. one total touchdown in the second I think half? It was eight games. Of eight games now going on to uh, hopefully they'll be able to repeat that into the Super Bowl in the ninth game. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens. This will be the sixth uh, Super Bowl for Brady and Belichick as a combination. We know that they are three and two, winning their first three. Bob knows all too well, well yes, about what happened in the last two you know, with yes. the uh, Giants in 2007. As a matter of fact, Glendale, Arizona, the site of this year's Super Bowl. So the Patriots will be returning to the scene of the crime when the Giants uh, stole what would have been a perfect season. The helmet catch by David Tyree, the mirage in the desert. They will look to uh, finish some unfinished business there and maybe take back what uh, was theirs, they felt, but did not be able to finish that. And that year, remember, it was all about Spygate. Yes. This year, it's all about, about Deflategate. Deflategate. So what's going to be the It's the perfect next symmetry, one? really. And uh, there we see who they'll be playing, uh, the Seattle Seahawks. And uh, Richard Sherman, who made a name for himself, if you remember, Bob, two years ago when they were you know, not so well known yet. Right. They had made the playoffs with a losing record uh, in Pete Carroll's first year, and they had that surprising win against the Saints, and they were somewhat up and coming. But the true test came in a game against the Patriots in Seattle, and uh, they did come up with the win. A one-point victory rallied from behind, and their defense, uh, you know, stymied the Patriots. And uh, Richard Sherman, the famous Yamad Bro tweet, and this was early on in the Twitterverse as well, right. when uh, players and uh, tw uh, Twitter was just becoming popular, and this was getting to be something that we were seeing regularly. And Richard Sherman, of course, no stranger to trash talk, no stranger to post-game uh, controversy with lack of respect. And uh, he did make a name for himself by going to the Twitterverse there. And uh, since then, of course, they did make the playoffs that year. And then the following year, they come back and they smack down with the blowout of the Broncos in the Super Bowl last year. And here they are back. Yeah. First team ever to repeat as a uh, head back to the Super Bowl since the Patriots did it in 2003, 2004, the last time the Patriots won when they were finishing their mini dynasty, winning three out of four. Seahawks looking to do the same. Well, the Seahawks had you Seahawks know, had a little bit of luck, luck. on their side it as they were just getting dominated by the Packers in this game, although the Packers offensively too conservative. They were not uh, putting the pedal down and trying to get more points. But at halftime, 16-0 Green Bay could have been more. They settled for a couple field goals early in this game with turnovers. They had a fourth and in inches from the goal line that they did not go for it. They settled for the field goals. And, you know, I was saying to my Packer friends, you know, take the points. This is a situation yes. here where you're going against a tough defense with a limited offense that Seattle has. You can win a low-scoring game and take the points, get off the board. But they settled too many times. They had another uh, goal line situation right after that that they didn't go for it. And then they just didn't uh, attack enough. No. And they allowed for the uh, Packers to get in it. But really, with everything that the Packers did wrong, it all comes down to three special teams plays. Oh, yeah. Up 16-0, midway through the third quarter, Seahawks doing absolutely nothing, looking to settle for a field goal. They pull the fake field goal, and they, and they catch the Packers sleeping. How yeah. can you be asleep in a situation like that? Everything on the line, a team needing a spark, you know, you have to be on guard there for a field goal, fake field goal attempt. They were not and the Seahawks field goal kicker runs for his life, and throws the uh, touchdown pass, so all of a sudden it's 16-7. Still then, the uh, Seahawks or Packers do get another field goal after more turnovers. I mean, Russell Wilson throws four interceptions right. in this game, and he threw some of those in the second half, including oh, yeah. the one that happened at the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Up 19-7 to seven with five minutes left, you intercept the Seahawks there, and a lot, of course, has been made 
of the defender lying down right there, not risking, you know, fumbling it. Right. I mean, we've seen that happen in big games before. The Patriots saw it. That was probably the way they were able to beat uh, the San Diego Chargers back in 2006, a road game that everybody felt the Chargers should have won. They intercepted the ball late. Troy Brown, the receiver, was, uh, stripped the uh, Chargers defender who was trying to go for a touchdown return when it wasn't really needed. So it's convenient that everybody criticizes the Packer defender right there for being conservative. I don't really have much uh, qualms with him doing that. There are a couple big widescreen shots of the field and the open field he had in front of him. And everybody says he could have possibly gone untouched for a, what would have been a 60, right. 70 yard touchdown run. I don't know for sure that he could have done that. I don't necessarily have that much. You're up by two scores right. with five minutes left. You, you, you got Aaron had... Rodgers, you've got the ball. You've got a team that has been doing nothing but turning the ball over. You know, he's got to be feeling like this is, we're cinching the game here. Right. We and get then, a first then down. Rodgers was starting to feel fatigue. You could see it. Down yeah, his legs. You know, maybe you get one or two first downs, and that's it. And at that time in the game, also remember Richard Sermon sprained his elbow, was still on the field. Right. And the Packers and do nothing there. He's literally wa running with one arm, and they go ultra conservative. They don't, and somehow, some way, even though they went conservative. They did not make the Seahawks burn their timeouts. No. Mind-boggling that the Seahawks, down two scores with five minutes left, would end regulation with a timeout still left in their back pocket. How right. is that even possible that they could do that? Seems, you know, impossible to think that they could have done that. So the Pack Seahawks somehow get the ball back without burning all three timeouts, and they go right down the field, score a touchdown to cut it to 19-14, and then they get the onside kick recovery. So a fake field goal, an onside kick recovery, and and they do that just over two minutes left with one timeout left. They could have even punted there, had the two, oh, minute, yeah. uh, drill, two minute timeout and their timeout and still gotten the ball back. Instead, they try that onside kick and the Packard guy on the hands team who was supposed to be blocking, but he was a tight end. He was part of the hands team. Ball's coming right to him. He goes in the air and botches it fumbles it away, Packers recover, they go right down the field again, and they score quickly. Yes. And here comes the other, I would call this a special teams, this is a two point uh, situation. I call that kind of a special teams play right there. They have Russell Wilson dead to rights. He's scrambling all over the place, has no receivers open. He lobs the ball into the end zone. Yeah. The ball's in the air for a half hour. And no Packer down. defender comes down and knocks it down. Yeah. They allow a guy to come over and make some miraculous catch on a play that had nothing. And it turns it from a one-point game to a three-point game. So setting up the Packers needing the field goal to tie instead of a field goal to one. Right. They went right down and set up that field goal, and they did score that field goal to force overtime. But they could have been playing for the win right oh, there yeah, no, if they, they knocked down that two-point conversion. I know, but it didn't happen that way, unfortunately. Totally ridiculous. So they go to overtime. They lose the coin toss. And how about that? Shades of a uh, past. Remember back in the day, uh, Seahawks versus Packers, early 2000s in a playoff game when the Seahawks won the coin toss. This was in Lambeau. Right. And their uh, captain there, the quarterback, says, we want the ball. We're going to score. And that was a big controversy. The microphones on the side of the field caught him picking that up. He then proceeded to throw the game-ending interception. The Packers intercept that ball, run down for the game-winning touchdown. This time, with the new rules, all the Packers have to do there is hold them to the field goal, and they're going to get a chance to tie right. or win it. Instead, they give up the 35-yard sudden-death touchdown to a curse on single coverage over the middle, Bob, on a deep pass. Why is there no safety back on helping? I the only no thing you cannot do is give up a touchdown. I mean, a field goal doesn't even beat you in that situation. Instead, they get the sudden death, and it's pandemonium. And how about this, Bob? The so-called 12th man, shame on them. Oh. How many of those fans left the game early and were trying to get back into the stadium when they were down 19-7 after that interception at the five-minute mark? Right. They left the game, and uh, you know they tried to get back in. So the vaunted 12th man. Shame on them for not staying to the bitter end and, uh, you know, not going for it there. So the Seahawks end up back in the Super Bowl. Back to back. And back to back. 
you know, kudos to them for, you know, not giving up and playing to the bitter end. But the Packers have a lot of questions to answer. And Aaron Rodgers did ask some of those questions in his postgame press conference, questioning their play calling, questioning why they were more aggressive down in those goal line situations early when they could have got touchdowns instead of field goals, questioning why they did not be more aggressive in the first quarter. No first downs converted at all in the entire fourth quarter when they had the ball how many times with all the turnovers. And really, I mean, Marshawn Lynch goes for 157 yards rushing. He was really the all, only offensive weapon for the Seahawks. Eddie Lacy, who seemed to be running at will, only ended up with a total of 73 yards. Right. Starks did end up with 44, so as a team rushing, they did go over 100. But, I mean, Lacy was running at will. Why didn't they just keep feeding him the ball? And again... With uh, Sherman getting injured playing with one arm, they didn't go at him at all no. after that. Why didn't they just throw the ball right at him? He was playing with one arm. It was obvious he was injured. And Earl Thomas also left this game and came back and was shaken up. So he was playing hurt. And instead, they got super conservative, and it cost them big time. And the Seahawks go back to the Super Bowl where they will face the Patriots in that Richard Sherman matchup. With, uh, with Brady and the Patriots. And also there's that other sidebar. If you remember when Sherman was making a name for himself, he went at uh, Daryl Revis uh, on the Twitterverse as well, saying that he was the top cornerback in the league. Daryl Revis was old news. He was better than him. So Revis, you know he hasn't forgotten that. So there'll be some uh, bulletin board material for the game. And of course, we just got to deal with the whole deflate gate. Right. Once it was spy gate, now it's deflate gate. And the league taking their sweet time here. The game was Sunday. It's Thursday afternoon. Can we get more than leaked, uh, you know, reports to, uh, you know, some of the ESPN guys and other guys leaking so-called information from this report? The, the NFL has yet to release their findings and what took place. We heard Bell, uh, Bill Belichick this morning saying emphatically, not once in his entire coaching history has he ever talked to a quarterback or a staff member about the uh, PSI of a football. So it's all news to him. They're cooperating completely, but they are saying they have no idea what the situation is here. And, you know, let's, you know, of course, what, what a shock, Bob. Right. The Patriots, a hated team around the league, and all the people who hate the Patriots jumping on Belichick, the whole thing, wanting to have an excuse for why the Patriots, who are still here, still winning, still going to yet another Super Bowl, and still uh, being somebody that they have to deal with. I don't know how many times I've heard year in, year out, you know, this year Patriots start two and two, everybody says they're done, this is it. The dynasty's over. I heard that, you know, in 2008. Right. I heard that in 2009. I heard that in 2010. I hear it every year. They are done. Brady's just sailed out. His uh, supermodel wife is taking the legs out from him. <laughs> He's too worried about being in photo shoots. And here he is one more time, ready for them to deal with. So all the fans who hate them, what a shock. They hate the Patriots even more. You know, they're not trying to win you over, fans. I hate to break it to you. They're just trying to win games. We could care less what anybody outside the uh, Patriot Nation thinks. They just worried about their own business, what they have to do to try to get this fourth Super Bowl for them. And this will be Brady's uh, sixth QB start, most ever by a quarterback. That stat alone stands, you know, alone separating him from other QBs. Montana, Bradshaw, we know Bradshaw has the four Super Bowl, Montana as well. So he's trying to join that group. Uh, Bill Belichick becomes the winningest coach in uh, playoff history with that win this weekend. So he now stands alone as far as how many wins he has. He moved past, um, you know, the late great, or the legendary, not late great, but the legendary Cowboys coach, Tom Landry, stepping past them as they move on into this situation. So, so Scott, do we have a stat of the week? From we do have a stat of the week. Strange man, uh, I don't believe he has arrived yet. He was on his way, but he did get the stat of the week in, and it's a pretty good stat. Tom, Tom Brady and the Patriots only have one loss at home when leading after halftime. Their official record, 82-1. and one. What a So record. if you are not in front and you're playing in Foxborough at halftime, chances are you are going to lose that game. Good stat by Statman. 
And uh, actually, let's talk about the this point spread as well in this game. Um, it started as Seahawks a favor by three. I thought that's what the New York Post. We we know we're not sure about the New York Post, Post. from time to time <laughs> if they're correct. I thought the stat line opened at two and a half. Yeah. Maybe it went to three. It quickly went down to a pick 'em. Moved to the Patriots. Uh, favored by one and a half, but I believe it has settled back in as a pick 'em. Stat will, that line will probably not move much until late next week when there's a flurry of activity as the game gets closer and we see what happens. Uh, but the, you know, we're just going to have to deal with what happens here uh, with the deflate game. Will the NFL be able to finish their investigation? A lot of people calling for the firing of Bill Belichick. The suspending suspension. of Bill Belichick, he should not be allowed to coach the team. And a lot of people saying vacate the victory over the Colts. Are you kidding me? Are these people really serious? I mean, what would you do? Have no Super Bowl? With no, yeah, put the Colts in. Yeah. Hey, get the Colts ready. Get them back in there. They can play the Seahawks. Unbelievable. And the core, all right, so let's break this down, Bob. I personally, as a Patriot fan, think that the matchup against the Seahawks is better than the matchup against the Packers. Right. I, you know, we know the Patriots offense is good enough to beat anybody, uh, but we don't know for sure. We feel a lot better this year about the Patriots defense than we have in recent past. We certainly think with their two corners, Browner and uh, Revis, they have a couple guys who can go man to man, which allows the defense to do other things. And defensively, we mentioned they've only given up one second half touchdown in eight games. That is eight games, count them. So we like their defense. We like what they're doing. Uh, but, you know, still, I would prefer not to have to, on a neutral field in warm weather, have to deal with a potentially potent offense, which the Green Bay Packers have. Right. You know, if they get it going, a good defense or not, could have troubles there. So I would rather have to stop a uh, low-scoring, limited offense that the Seahawks have and then try to outdo their defense and come up right. with enough points to win. And again, we have to question the Seahawks' schedule. We've been mentioning it for the last couple of weeks on the show here. Who have they beaten uh, this season? Oakland, the Giants, Carolina twice, Arizona with backup second and third string quarterbacks twice, San Fran, who we know were just crumbling all about their, you know, their franchise, their, their coaches even there anymore. They beat them twice. Philly with Dirty Sanchez, backup quarterback. St. Louis, and now Rodgers on one leg, a game they should have lost. You know, they absolutely should have lost that game. So, you know, which matchup do you think is better? But I mean, I, I think they match up better been, against the Seahawks. I liked it better if they had been with the, you know, the Packers, but. You like that as a, uh, as a cosmetic thing. Right. You wanted to see that game, but right. as far as, from the Patriots' point of view, who do you think they have a better chance of beating? Oh, they would have had a better chance of beating the, the Packers, I think, than the Seahawks. All right, so Seahawks. you're standing behind the Seahawks as the defending champs yeah. with their defense, and you think their defense is going to get it done. The other interesting thing, we talk about the Patriots and their second half prowess defensively and offensively, really, the Seahawks are the similar way. It's going to be a battle of two teams who, uh, you know, figure their things out during the first half, get themselves in a situation to win and then shut things down in the second half. And in the Patriots case, they usually run away with it. And the Seahawks offensively, we know they're going to run the ball with Marshawn Lynch and then they're going to try to make the big plays. That's what they do on offense. They're not going to kill you stat wise. They're going to put up any gaudy stats, but they will you know, make a big play when needed. And we've seen this from them, you know, throughout the last couple of seasons. And Russell Wilson is a very good quarterback and he has an ability to scramble. He doesn't scramble always to run, but he definitely scrambles to pass. And he will find somebody open when he needs to. And that's what he's going to try to do against his defense. But I think the Patriots defense is going to be able to limit them. I mean, Curse and Baldwin, are they going to be able to get open against Reven and B Revis and Browner? I mean, I don't know. I think the Patriots have more offensive weapons. What are the Seahawks defense going to do against Gronkowski? And, uh, you know, what are they going to be able to do? And are they banged up? I mean, right. we know that uh, Sherman has a sprained arm, so it's yeah, going to so be interesting to gonna, see. Is he going to play or not? We don't know. He will now. play. I'm sure that he will definitely play, but how much will they be able to limit him? And maybe they will, Patriots, we know, will not be afraid of attacking. Right. Rodgers did attack somewhat. I mean, Jordy Nelson did have five catches. 
uh, for seven, uh, 70 yards, 71 yards. Cobb had seven catches, 62 yards. So they were able to get their two top receivers involved in the offense. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be a good game. No way, no how will it be a repeat of last year. If I it mean, is, it'll be... I mean, come on, Bob. I, I've seen a couple of people already worry about the fact that this looks like the same situation as last year. The Broncos, high-powered offense going against the Seahawks, and but it was just a total blowout. A There's game. no way. I mean, when was the last time in a big game you saw the Patriots get blown out? It never happens. We've seen them lose these Super Bowls, but when they've done that, low score and close games, we've seen them lose some playoff games as well. They don't not, I mean, very, very, very rarely are you ever going to see the Patriots get blown out, especially in a big game situation. So I see no similarity. The defense for the Patriots is much better than what the Broncos had last year. We know Peyton Manning's big game history. Right. He comes up lame, so not no similarities at all. I think this will definitely be a good game. We got two and I think it'll definitely be here, you know, a, one that the fans will be uh, you know, tuning into yeah. for the whole thing. I mean, if anything, you know, the Patriots would have to be the team that has the ability to pull away. But no way, not a chance. Do you want to give a prediction, Bob? I mean, we're well, we're we're running we out of time, minutes. so we're probably not going to get to anything else. We'll probably so just stick th- to this. I think it's going to be myself. I mean, I, I think the Patriots have got this game all the way, but still being an NFC fan, you know, I got a feeling that it could go the opposite way too. But if it does, it'd be like a 31-27 game. 31-27 Patriots, you're saying? No, Seahawks. You're saying Seahawks. So you're saying Seahawks. All right, Bob has been uh, good with his predictions in the past. Year and, uh, in and year out, he way, somehow comes up with it. one big thing, too. Congratulations what? on your 150th show. Correct, Bob. Thank you very much. This is, uh, well, you know what, Bob? We couldn't do it without you. We couldn't do it without Mike and all the other guys. McFadden, Strange Man, Dave King's helping us out today in there. And of Candy's course, down and in the course, studio. And of course, my friend. Connor Mike. Faco, the legendary, you know, we're making him a legend. Yeah. You know, Mike and I were saying, you know, it's too bad we're doing the show during the day and he's stuck at school. Well, and almost, we said, well, what, what could he learn more at school than he couldn't learn here? here yeah. Well, uh, he almost, hands he on almost, job training. He Bob. almost had it to come today because... Uh, because of the snow, right? right? But, yeah, no, this is show 150. Also, thanks to the fans for tuning in for all all those shows. Uh, so we appreciate that. And hopefully the next 150 will be as good as the last Maybe, maybe. We have any predictions from the guys in the studio? What, uh, what, is, uh, what do we got from Mike and Dave in there? Nothing. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody in there making predictions? Jets. Dave says Jets, as we remember, as we, we were we previewing bye the bye. season. Dave said Jets. Okay. Oh, we're out of time? All right. We're out of time. Well, thank you for tuning in. We will be back after the Super Bowl to see what happened. You get to watch uh, the Losers Bowl next week. (laughs) Yeah, Pro Bowl, yeah, tune into that. We will be back then. We'll see. Hopefully the Patriots win it. We'll see. We'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah.